Are you too loud? The room's too quiet. All right, I'm going to get started. There's this big note up here that says, please end on time, so I guess I better start on time. So, uh, thanks for coming. Good morning to all of you. My name is Eric Sink. I'm the founder of Source Gear. I'm here to talk to you today about a new open source uh, DBCS that we've got called Veracity. And, um, my apologies in advance if you came here expecting a sales pitch. I don't do that. <laughs> it's not my thing. Um, I'm here to talk about Veracity. Veracity is, it is open source, Apache license V2. Um, I'm going to give what may be a more technical presentation than um, is common for this particular room. I'm going to assume that you already know what a DBCS is, and uh, I'm going to have code on the screen. So <laughs> just uh, brace yourself, be, <laughs> be wary about that. Um, Veracity is just getting started. We call it version 0.3 right now, so it's just it's a new thing for us. Uh, there's a lot of things that I think are cool about it that we could talk about. I'm going to focus today mostly on one thing, and uh, all about all I have time to do is is talk about uh, you know one thing in, in a little bit of depth, pique your interest, and uh, hope that you find the veracity as interesting as we do. Let's talk a little bit about why we love DBCSs. We have uh, what I think of as five benefits of a DBCS, and I call them fast, cruise ship, Moscow, Dell, and Lego. And um, <laughs> my apologies for the, uh, you're going to see some formatting problems on, this, on these slides. It's, it's a long story, and I was done. But anyway, fast, cruise ship, Moscow, Dell, and Lego. Fast. This is the one everyone knows about. Um, when you use a DBCS, everything's local, so all your operations are really, really fast. And this is the one we love. We, we just love having everything be fast. We hate progress bars. We don't want to be waiting on our version control tool. Cruise ship. So dis disconnected operation is, is really what I'm talking about here. The situations where you don't have a good internet connection. Used to be, whenever we were talking about this, the idea we would cite is an airplane. Yes, you, you tell your boss, I need to switch to Git because I, I want to build a code on an airplane. Well, now all the airplanes have Wi-Fi. So, <laughs> this is the Royal Caribbean Enchantment of the Seas. I can tell you from experience, the, the internet on this ship sucks. I'm talking $20 an hour for three second latency and 60% packet loss. This is better, this is worse than no internet at all. So the next time you're trying to convince your boss to switch to Mercurial, tell him, I gotta be able to code on my yacht, okay? <laughs> for DDCS's, yacht is the new airplane. Moscow, I'm talking here about distributed teams. I'm talking about any situation where you have multiple cities, and uh, whether it's offshoring or whatever, the reason we love DBCS is here is because we can do the right thing and we can have a server per city. We can have, we can have servers where they belong and we can synchronize them without a lot of pain. And then we don't have to deal with you know, slow pipes from India to San Francisco or whatever. It gives us flexibility. Dow. We love DBCSs because they scale out instead of just up. We don't, when we have a big team, we don't want to buy a really, really expensive server. We want to go to Dell, and we want to pay for a server that the price is four digits. So this is another big, big benefit of DBCSs, is that the scalability model is completely different, and it allows us a lot of advantages, one of which is we don't have to buy half a million dollar servers. Finally, there's Lego. Now, this is, this is what I think of as the, the unsung hero advantage of the DBCS model, and that is that we can piece together our systems and our servers however we want. They're like Lego bricks. We can build stuff. This was, uh, this was last week or the week before. Somebody built a printer out of Lego. Oh, <laughs> this guy gets some sort of geek award in my mind. I mean, it's an actual printer. It's really cool. He has a driver for it and everything. <laughs> So, but I mean, Legos are the ultimate example of geeks piecing things together to solve complex problems. DBCSs are more like that than centralized tools. You can, you can piece together servers. You can say, I have a server that I want to contain only code that passed the test suite. DBCSs can do that. You can push and pull change sets around and you can have servers dedicated for different purposes. Very often, the, uh, the centralized crowd will say, I, I don't want a DBCS because I gotta have a central server. And we're not saying you want a central server, we're saying you want more than one. Because you want them for different purposes. So, so we love distributed source control tools. 
Um, that box was a smiley. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah. Anyway, we love source control tools, but the fact is we use a whole bunch of other stuff. And none of that stuff is decentralized yet. We use all this stuff. When I did this slide, it didn't flow off the bottom. It almost looks better this way. So, I mean, we use bug tracking, we use all of these other tools, and none of them are decentralized like our source control tool is. The problem with this is that the, the trend in our industry is toward integration. Everything is being integrated together. And especially at the enterprise level, especially at larger companies. DBCSs are not making much penetration into larger companies, at least not as, as um, enterprise-wide deployments, because they don't have an integration story that works. And the reason why is because when you try and mix centralized stuff and decentralized stuff, you kind of get about what you'd expect. Jeez, what happened at this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what this slide says at the top <laughs> What this says is oil and water <laughs> I am not sure how this happened <laughs> So yeah, when you take a DBCS and you try and mix it with a whole bunch of centralized stuff you get an oil and water mixture that doesn't work. Your, I mean, your source card operations are fast, but you still have to have a live connection every time you update a plug. Um, you can't, in disconnected scenarios, you can check in your code, but you can't do all the other things you're supposed to do. You're, you're required to update the work item or whatever, and you'll do that later if you remember. If you have multiple cities, DBCS works great in that model, um, but you still need this live connection for everything else you do. And because you got this huge central server back in the central office, that central server costs more than your house if you're on a big team. And that central server is so quirky that it dictates everything about your development process. So I don't know if you remember when uh, Microsoft's slogan was, where do you want to go today? Well, I don't think this is where we want to go. What we need is the benefits of a DBCS, but applied to all this other stuff. We want to decentralize more stuff so that the entire development team suite can work the way DBCSs do. <laughs> we don't want just tree and file system data to be decentralized. We want to be able to decentralize record data. We want change sets that work for databases, and we want to be able to push and pull those change sets the, way, the same way we do now for source code. So before I talk about how Veracity tries to solve this problem, let me uh, mention a couple of other solutions. Um, we are, we're not the first ones trying to, to go after this area. Um, a lot of people are trying to solve what we call the distributed bug tracking problem. Um, DITs, tick, get, get issues, bugs everywhere. The model they're basically using is you store everything in the tree. It's not the worst solution to the problem you can find. My, my complaint is going to be that the merged algorithms for source code are not the right merge algorithms for database stuff. There's databases have all kinds of extra information we can use to make a better merge. and uh, these approaches don't let that information be used. And I'll explain more about that in a bit. There's also a system called Fossil. Anybody ever heard of Fossil as a, as a DBCS? Fossil's cool. I like Fossil. Uh, it's written by the same guy who wrote SQLite, so it comes from an excellent pedigree, you, you might say. Um, unlike the bugs everywhere approach, which I'll call some kind of a square peg, round hole thing going on, he's got a round hole, round peg. It's, it, his approach is right. The problem is his merge algorithm is wrong. Um, basically, his merge is the last record gets it. <clears throat> we have to merge two records that conflict. The one with the later timestamp wins. The later timestamp being the one that was assigned on a local machine, the clock which you know might be set anywhere. <laughs> so he's on the right track. It's just that he left out 20 pounds of lines of really hard code. So. <laughs> <laughs> So um, Veracity is, uh, as I said, it's our solution. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how we try and solve this stuff with what I call a decentralized database. And it is basically what I've just described to you. It's, it presents the notion of a database um, with records and fields, um, and it allows push-pull of change sets in that database. If you go to our website, you can download the source code. It's, as I said, it's Apache licensed. And uh, if you were to 
Go to that website and look at the code. All the files that have the word Zing in the name are this module. It's what I'm talking about. Um, Zing isn't a name that is necessarily going to stick. It's not a name we're going to market. I'm just telling you, if you're looking for the code for this, look for Zing. That's because uh, that's what I called it one day. <laughs> so the thing about a DDCS, let me check my time. Okay. The thing about uh, DDCSs is, is you, um, it's a directed acyclic graph. You're, you're basically building history by adding nodes. And each node we call a change set. And in the, in the usual model, every change set, you can think of it in two ways. You can think of it as the entire state of the tree at that moment, and you can think of it as the changes between it and its parents. So for example, node two is a change set. You can think of it as uh, the whole tree can be grabbed from that node two, or you can think of it as the difference between one and two. Both interpretations are valid. And the way we build history is that each node um, has a parent. And when things go um, into what we call concurrent development, you end up with um, a, a branch situation, which is what's happened at node three. <clears throat> node three has two children, four and five. Two people did the same thing. They both checked in a change set off of node three. We need to merge them. To, and the way we do that is we create node six with two parents. This is all basic DDCS stuff. What I'm saying is the whole model works the same way if you just change tree to database. Every one of these nodes is a state of a database. And node six, the challenge of creating it is the same way. We need to take whatever happened in node five and four and merge them together to create um, a database that is correct according to what was the intent. And we do that with, um, we can do that with an auto merge, um, so long as the rules are specified in what we call a template. Um, Zing has a template driven database. This is an example of a template. It's a really, really simple template. All I've done here is defined a field, which is called val and is of type integer. That's it. Um, I put the slide in only to show you that pretty much everything in Veracity is JSON. Uh, so json.org is the website for that. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's a it's kind of excellent. It's like XML except with curly braces. You should spell that out. Ah, good point. Thank you. Um, Jason is spelled J-S-O-N. So it's like YAML, but not as pretty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, J-S-O-N, J-S-O-N.org is the website for that if you're interested. Um, it's, uh, it's a format derived somewhat from JavaScript. Anyway, um, you'll get used to seeing Jason on the screen here in a minute. 